warm welcome to Quantum Cast 2024, a podcast organized by the Royal College Science Association, and I'm your host for this episode, Dulanjan Vikram Singh. This podcast aims on exploring the fascinating world of science and its impacts on our lives. So today we'll be discussing about a very recent topic that a lot of Sri Lankan people are facing in currently about the environment challenges faced by the Sri Lankan people. Joining us today is an eminent professor, Mr. Professor Turney, who is a leading expert in marine biology. Professor, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Pada. Thank you for inviting me for this event. Yes. So before we move on to our main segment, which is regarding marine biology, we'll have a bit of introduction about yourself and the background you had on how you got into marine biology. Yeah, actually, I also from uh, down south. Uh, I schooled in Saint Sevier's College, Mathra, and again to Rahul College uh, from grade six onwards. And since uh, since we are southern people, we are always you know got used to be always with the sea. So that is where I started you know loving the sea. And then my levels, I did my uh, levels in biological streams. Then I got to the university and uh, university science stream. And uh, from that point onwards, I st- uh, after my third year, I started doing my zoology special degree as my my degree. So I started st- zoology as my special degree, and uh, then I got a second upper uh, uh, grading. Then I I got my first job at at the faculty of uh, medicine as a scientific officer. So it's a kind of you know checking bodies, and uh, mm-hmm. that is not palatable at at all because I am a kind of outgoing person. Always want to go out and uh, enjoy job. the environment. So I quit that job and I again joined the, the Department of Fisheries Biology at that time as a probation lecturer. That's my, yeah, my my academic career started. Then probation lecturer and then lecturer and then I went to Sweden to my to do my PhD again in coral ecology, coral uh, biology, coral reproduction. So then I submitted my thesis in two thousand eight. Uh, to Karl Mayer University, Sweden. Then I came back as a senior lecturer. At the time, I was the head of the Department of Oceanography. And uh, then, after 2014, I joined uh, the government as a general manager for Marine Environment Protection Authority as a GMO CEO. So I work in the government sector for seven years until 2021, uh, protecting all the ocean in the in the country and working with all the universities, uh, schools, and all the government agencies, private agencies. In 2021, I went back to the university again, and um, then in that case, I work locally, regionally, and even globally. I work with UN agencies as experts, and still I'm working as a uh, expert for marine pollution in so for some UN agencies. So that that's the way I came, and uh, it was an experience. Journey, yeah, man. <laughs> yes. Experience, <laughs> of course, a very exciting journey. So, sir, so, uh, you mentioned that you have traveled around the world regarding to get your educational as well as regarding the research regarding marine biology. So, this leads to my first question of today's tea. What would you say is the significance of the marine system in Sri Lanka? You know, in the world, you know, uh, uh, the ocean covers about seventy-one percent of the Earth's surface, and uh, it provides everything: uh, the oxygen, it absorbs carbon dioxide, uh, it cools the, uh, the planet, and again provides us with fish, everything. So we are very much depending on the ocean. In Sri Lankan context, we are at the uh, we are northern Indian Ocean mm. people. It's a large island, Sri Lanka, and we are surrounded by an uh, ocean that is about eight times larger. So still, our focus on ocean is very much less. We are focusing on fisheries, tourism, and for some extent, um, oil and gas explorations. So that is, we just started that one. But still, in in our case, Sri Lanka, we have a huge potential to use our ocean in larger context, and uh, you know, use the ocean in to explore more uh, resources, uh, train scientists to do lots of research, find resources there, and uh, maybe expand tourism and and maybe underwater drilling or whatever. There's huge potential there, and shipping sector again. So we have a big potential around Sri Lanka regarding ocean resources and ocean opportunities, but still we are not using using it because we don't know we don't know it. So still under testing. Under testing. So this podcast will be another eye opener for especially young kids like you and schooling kids. It's okay. Just another world there. It's another. Area. And that's a world that we have not touched. Not too, touched, and and you can go and you can do marvels, right? You can enjoy the environment. You can you can be a scientist or marine marine manager, marine lawyer, marine architect. Everything is there. 
therefore uh, yes there's opportunity i think this is a, I, I, this will be an eye opener so i hope in the future mm. sri lankans will start using ocean in more meaningful and more productive way to benefit the country yes of course welcome to nchs studying has never felt this good it's not just studying this is what a lab should be Whatever I want, whenever I need. I don't miss a single class of it. I'm flying to Australia next week. Commence degree pathways at NCHS and continue in Australia, Malaysia or USA. Unlock your future. So this is leading into my second question. Uh, I mean, Sri Lanka is a very biodiverse right place. It could be the environmental, it could be the tourism or it could be any other thing. So regarding your sector regarding marine ecosystem uh, could you share some insights and examples that are unique for unique found in Sri Lanka in this marine system ecosystems yeah uh, i am a scientist uh, as i told you i am a marine ecologist but i am a diver i am a dive master and i am an underwater photographer and underwater videographer so i go there by myself right so for example if you if you go for a for a uh, for you know a place like yala or maybe nakars yes you will see something but if you dive under water and if you start exploring you will see much more more than 10 times bigger than that right uh, yes. volume wise and again diversity wise it's very vivid very colorful and it's a unique experience it's expeditious right therefore we have a very unique environments under water people mm. most of people have not have not seen less than 1% of people have seen that i mean right. it's a sensitive topic as of well as course, yes a lot of people do not explore explore underwater, underwater. so it's a, for you it's a place to go right it's a very unique and for boys and even girls it's a very ad- adventurous place to go and it's a challenging right challenging. so you should have courage to go there so yeah, we have corals we have shipwrecks underwater we have lots of marine biodiversity large fish large fish schools various types of you know plant types everything is there and colorful so if you take a take a photo from yala or vilpatu is colorful but it's that's more color colorful uh, underwater and so you can enjoy every second if you start diving in if you explore the uh, underwater world so therefore my my answer is that yes we have unique ecos that's it that's why lots of tourists come here but but we are not going there yes sri lankans don't go but foreigners they come and do uh, do diving and explore our, our waters i mean a lot of uh, abroad nations such as there are some land lock nations who doesn't have a sea at of the moment of course they are they are really willing to come here a lot of tourists are willing to come here and go explore that diversity underneath the water in sri lanka yes of course so we have to do that so the, again opportunities there i think even for you as a science science organization as a science society you can have a diving unit Mm. and the ocean explorer unit so you should be your next shoot off from your from your from your society right yes. it's possible right so there's a new thing we can do if you do that till your first school who is doing that so i'm proposing that for you <laughs> yes uh, very valuable thoughts for the royal college science association we hope that they do it in the future with the support of professor dan so uh, next moving on professor understanding how do these ecosystem benefit the people in sri lanka in a perspective yeah uh, it's known that we benefit through fisheries we yes. catch all of fisheries products everything and and of course then tourism to we dive and observe there so again lots of tourists come to coastal tourism and ocean tourism mainly because of our underwater ecosystems and beyond that we have under underwater archaeological heritage we have lots of ships shipwrecks those are underwater monuments our those are underwater ruins So if you explore them you can trace our history back how our maritime you know environment improved and and how how it was at the very beginning and what sort of cultural links we had right and it's, it's a treasure there and again shipwreck is another uh, i would say is a uh, uh, kind of place where most of animal aggregate is a place where you can see lots of animal so again lots of biodiversity there right so so those are the things we can easily explore right and in addition to that so uh, if you check from ocean uh, surface to ocean flow unimaginable resources are there unimaginable opportunities are there right therefore ocean is open mm. so if you start uh, reading about the ocean and if you start exploring about the ocean from one single place it's become never ending horizon always expanding right you yes. can't touch the horizon always so, so, you know you can't touch the horizon it's always expanding likewise if you start exploring the ocean You, every time you start seeing something new 
exciting do it yes of course sir welcome to nchs studying has never felt this good it's not just studying this is what a lab should be whatever i want whenever i need i don't miss a single class of it I'm flying to Australia next week. Commence degree pathways at NCHS and continue in Australia, Malaysia or USA. Unlock your future. So, sir, so you mentioned about the benefits that the Sri Lankans get and how biodiversity five marine system that Sri Lanka has. But unfortunately, currently we see with the technological era coming into Sri Lanka and digitalization coming into Sri Lanka, pollution is being like in a key role here. So, sir, uh, mo- this moves me to the next question about pollution and its impact. So, can you explain how pollution, such as uh, microplastics and plastic, is affecting the marine life in Sri Lanka? Yeah, before that, I again add something for the, my previous question. Yes. You know, so at present, we extract drugs from ocean, right? Drugs for heart ailments, drugs for rash, uh, skin rashes, uh, drugs for arthritis. So, new technology, new biotechnological, you know. Uh, innovations innovation so you guys you can you know do lots of innovations in the, from the ocean right not only that even we can extract uranium from the ocean uranium is a is a is a fuel for nuclear, nuclear weapons, weapons right so we can extract that right you can jump into that terrain also right ocean flow from the f- ocean flow to further down uh, gases yes. oil and other other other, other deposits under water and lots of minerals so whatever you know the components we observe in our computers and in, in our uh, laptops or in our mobile phones as you know processors or the elements coming from the ocean right so those are the areas we have not touched in sri lankan point mm-hmm. of view so still lot of lots of things we can do from the ocean right that's the answer for my previous question now the pollution so, you know if i take sri lankan as an example we are we are a island nation we have about 104 rivers so those rivers flow as you know radially mm-hmm. around the country so that brings water it's not pure water it's polluted water so in in the water you can observe liquid pollutants and solid pollution pollutants so liquid pollutants you can't see but by looking at the color you can say that okay it's a polluted nitrate phosphates all the organic matters all the heavy metals are there so if you check waters in around, around colombo mm. totally polluted right if you check water in colombo is fecally polluted fecal coliform fecal uh, bacteria sa there mm. because most of the toilets are connected to mm. water waste mm. and then everything end up in the ocean like right? mm. it's a liquid pollution we don't see and you, you can see you can smell it sometimes you can see the color so then you can have an idea right otherwise you won't see any pollutants sitting in ocean waters this liquid pollution we, we don't care much about but it's a serious issue serious issue then so it starting from plastics fiberglass glass metals food wrappers everything is there if you go to uh, wellavatta beach the mm. process beach right i have been walking around after go all in the morning right you will see everything there right but by around 8:39 is clean because somebody is cleaning it people like you you clean it otherwise if you stop cleaning the wellavatta or mount beach or, or gold face beach for two days you will be it seeing be heap of garbage mm. on the floor on 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 the ocean surface was on 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 the beach so reason is that we are polluting it we are mismanaging our waste here so if you throw a little uh, for uh, maybe yogurt 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 spoon here within a couple of weeks time you can find the same spoon from wellavatta some in beach here because it goes through the water canals and mm. end up end up there right mm. same food wrappers ice cream wrappers or the packaging materials end up there so unless we we don't manage our waste properly and more ethically if i say about the ethically mm. our ocean will be polluted for centuries even for the future therefore pollution is a big issue yes i mentioned about the coastal pollution but pollution from ships pollution from oil spills right pollution from ship emission from uh, the the ship fumes mm. those are also there right sound pollution can you imagine sound pollution in the ocean so how many boats go up and down yeah. and the in the water you know those sound waves trickle uh, pass very efficiently so how many sounds to those you know ocean animals you know plankton small fish large fish mammals they receive to their ears yeah it is so much polluted water they are torturing we are torturing them and light pollution mm. 
you never think that you know in 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 velavatta beaches are like polluted from you know our lights right second so pollution so everything is there but this pollution is a very huge problem in the ocean so somehow we have to is our duty to reduce it because we are depending on the ocean so if we kill the ocean that will bounce back yeah, to us nice. and uh, that's that will be the end of our whole human kind to our life so main the, you know all the animals will disappear because of the ocean so the, 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 the the i think our biological system or the system relies on the ocean everything will collapse sea waves and the fishery that we have yes. so you mentioned about the general perspective of a uh, pollution i mean regarding with the lack of uh, management of uh, management of plants in various cities that the pollution uh, the ocean gets polluted and about uh, oil sinks with happening in ships so uh, next moving on to a bit of another various topic so are there any other major pollutions impacting sri lankan marine environments like in another way that people don't see in their naked eye so liquid pollution people of course they won't see it but microplastic shuddha plastic right so so as you throw something it will start start you know decomposing Decom- so first step is they break into small pieces those are called microplastics so if when you breathe you breathe microplastic you breathe plastic right so if you take this dust here all the dust contain microplastic even clouds we can find microplastic even ocean floor we can find microplastic so we you know we uh, you know in manampitiya in in anuradhapura mm-hmm. we have seen that elephants die because they eat polythene bags in them and they are able to block the eye liver canals and they die same thing happens in the ocean large polythene bags and others they are consumed by uh, turtles and whales even dolphins they don't consume but they miss understand miss identify them as their food food particles and they eat and the same result they die because of they they, they block the eye liver canals food you know food canal and they die is a slow death very painful death painful. now we can apply to the same to the fight of the, the uh, microplastics microplastics are small pieces of plastics and when they are in the water single cell algae and filamentous algae come and settle on it so so it become a small particle surrounded by algae is green in color so fish small fish and fish larvae small fish they start feeding on that they think that is algae but they are actually they, they are consuming microplastics and then what happened to them so they also die this fish fish finger fish fries fish uh, you know juvenile fish they die so juvenile fish and other fish are you know those are the very base of food webs and food chains so you cut all the food webs and food chains from the bottom so what happens the rest of the food chain complete collapse so our biodiversity our fisheries will be in is a jeopardy in the future because of that we don't see it Hmm. right so now uh, even in our brain we can see microplastics Plast. in our blood we can see even placenta we our, our, we pass microplastic to the babies right even uh, uh, dolphins when they breathe that breath also contain contain microplastic is everywhere so that's un- unseen but extremely hazardous problem we don't see but now we are facing it so the ultimate result would be again again unknown diseases for us right and uh, maybe f- changes in our physiology maybe changes in biodiversity collapse of uh, the you know well known uh, uh, food chains and food webs ultimately we have a issue with food security biodiversity security so issues is happening now yeah it's what professor mentioned was that people can't see this into the naked eye and you mentioned how it impacts in a very very big way to the human chain as well as you mentioned to the food chain and many other various impacts so if you are listening to this podcast you might know now the danger of using plastics and how it affects us in a very very small way but it goes into a big mind so next moving on professor recently i was reading some articles regarding about this uh, biodiversity uh environment team so it mentioned that overfishing in sri lanka also uh, degrades its marine ecosystem so how is it possible overfishing so if you go to uh, same i am taking colombo as an example because we are now we are at colombo so if you go to mount levenia of uh, colombo beaches you know of colombo or go goldfish you won't see much fish because it has only been taken out by fishermen right mm. and we have a number of fishing gears fishing boats so 
in since we are biologists we don't talk about you know carrying capacity so if you have this room we can fill about maybe 100 people mm. if you if you put 200 people you are exceeding carrying capacity yes the same so you have a fixed amount of fish but here we have excess amount of fishing gears and yes. fishing boats and fish fishermen so the resources are not not enough so we t- at, at some at some day there the fish there will no be there will not be any fish in the in the sea because all fish is there is taken out right so therefore in sri lanka we have a very big issue with uh, overfishing we are using you know, dynamites is illegal but we are using it in some places we are using bottom set nets not only we f- we catch fish we even destroy the environment we are using the bottom trolls in in uh, in, in uh, pogwe region sri lanka and even indian yeah they are taking whole fish stocks even bycatch bycatch is a bycatch is a catch is a another phenomenon if you target for example you target some for example you target jacks mm. but if you catch you know some jellyfish with that jellyfish. jack that jellyfish is a bycatch they are not targeting this right i see extra catch yeah that's a that's a bycatch so in in bottom trolling is non selective it catch everything therefore lots of bycatch is there so what they do is they throw away bycatch they extract the target fish and target you know edible animals they extract others they throw it away uh, uh, lobsters crabs shrimps they throw away right other other marine plants they throw away as bycatch it's a huge problem so therefore in sri lanka because of this uh, unsustainable fishing gears and high amount of fishermen fishing gears and and fishing boats we are catching more and more fish than than we are supposed to right that leads to uh overfishing overfishing that that again leads to resource depletion so the amount of resources are going down daily day by day so therefore day by day fishermen don't get enough catch that catch also going down less income to the fishermen so therefore they are their family life their their life you know the status also going down environment is degrading Degrade. less tourism less uh, 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 fishing opportunities less this opportunities for you know extract others i mean drugs and others less opportunities so it, it again leads to another set of issues therefore is happening so as a government uh, we have to take some decisions to stop it and arrange some you know ways to establish sustainable exploitation not unsustainable so if we can establish that we can ex- we can observe that we can we'll see in the future at least there are some fish stocks remain otherwise that will lead to as you mentioned over exploitation it means a collapse of whole system not only ocean even land also it land happens if you do or, or if you engage in over exploitation yes of course uh, i think our next segment is regarding the solutions i mean as uh, professor mentioned these solutions needs to be sustainable as well as you know very practical way into both people as well as biodiversity so we'll be catching the next segment after this short break Welcome to NCHS. Studying has never felt this good. It's not just studying. This is what a lab should be. Whatever I want, whenever I need. I don't miss a single class of it. I'm flying to Australia next week. Commence degree pathways at NCHS and continue in Australia, Malaysia or USA. Unlock your future. Hello and welcome back to the show we were interviewing Professor Tony regarding the marine technology in Sri Lanka and we shared some valuable insights regarding the advantages regarding the challenges that this technology this ecosystem has faced in the current era in Sri Lanka we stopped where the problems are now it's time for the solutions as we mentioned so What are some ways we can use the marine biology to help address the current environmental issues in Sri Lanka? You know science is a kind of investment that's my my main understanding that's my main you know uh, theory I, I would say. So if you find something new that's a kind of invest, in, investment for the future. So whatever we learn from the ocean can be applied to other areas right. For example if you find some new ways to restore coral reefs resto mangroves mm. maybe replenish uh, degrading fish stocks we can use those techniques to use on, on the land base right to restore uh, like land based ecosystems restore land based uh, you know biodiversity we can do that so whatever the research even irrespective of the place ocean or land 
whatever the new research you are doing whatever the new findings you are having is a finding that help the nature or mankind or complete biodiversity so therefore are not like dynamites and other weapons mm. right they are destructive but destructive. as scientists what we, biologists we what we do we always try to uh, look for some new inventions that he- help us protect it in the environment so if you do more research on the ocean if i again go back to ocean more innovations more you know if you develop some technologies that always that helps to the mankind helps to the marine environment helps to the marine biodiversity and therefore whatever the way you can engage in research that's the best thing you can do but before that there's a big way you have to first know about it you have to study about the ocean you have to study about the environment right then you have to get your qualifications without qualifications you can do that but better to have a strong background, background. you are sitting on a structure a structure yeah so structure. then you become a, a stronger person so then you start when you start then then doing research it means you explore you you understand issues you find you are finding solutions so that that's the place you are then again no, you are not finding solutions for the current current status but even for the future issues you can predict that really? then you find solutions now for example climate change mm. is happening now now climate global warming is happening global warming is done now now global boiling now right the next step will be global frying okay. right so it's it's a future scenario but now you can if you are a scientist if you know about the theory if you know what you are doing you can find some solutions to stop that mm. right same in the ocean so therefore i always encourage people start understanding environment first and develop your own capacity by studying and being you know qualifications then step into the conservation become an activist so whatever you 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 find whatever you innovate that will help the complete the whole of our planet therefore the re- ocean research help you know protect ocean resources fish resources and develop better marine fisheries develop better marine tourism develop better marine um, uh, shipping sector better you know environment friendly way to extract resources so therefore more you engage in those activities more you are starting you know protecting it and more uh, start innovating new techniques mm. and that will help to protect the environment that is we are looking for the sustainability mm. sustainability is a, you know it's a three pillar theory environment sustainability economic sustainability and uh, social sustainability mm. so you can't be you know you can have all social uh, benefits while forgetting environment and economic you can't get all economic benefits Okay. by by forgetting social and environment, environment. so there should be balance if you can have those three balance from these three pillars you can attain you can get you can achieve that sustainability that's what you i think mentioned the word itself define sustainable means to balance yeah balance so sector so then you st- once you are accomplished with all this the, the qualification i mentioned and if you start doing research that will help you and all scientists and all the people to attain that to achieve sustainability sustainability is you know our our own survival not only our own survival the survival of even our future generations yeah so so where you mentioned sustainable development where you mentioned three categories is environment sustainability social sustainability and economical sustainability and you itself mentioned that uh, you need to balance the three of them to have a good sustainable development so next question leads into this kind of segment so you mentioned previously mentioned that uh, when you sustain the environment some people are economically not sustained when you sustain the economy it's not sustain the environment the issue is there so the solution that we tell in this podcast can't do be overnight so this leads to my next question so how does this marine biology directly contribute to the economical perspective in sri lanka if you develop the marine marine bit of yeah. biology so for example now we discussed that uh, our fish stocks are overfished so our fish our fish you know the amount of fish living in the ocean is you know the is going down so what we can do so we can culture fish because now we are focusing on wild fish catchers we go and collect them okay. those are wild fish catchers but if we can culture them that's called mariculture mariculture so we culture the same fish we culture more economically uh, feasible or economically benefit beneficial fish species and we can get more benefit fish, fish to the country more income to the country and the same the same way we can protect our wild 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 catches wild 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 stocks one thing you can do and we are depending on sometimes we collect pearls 
from the from the pearl mm-hmm. oysters so in oyster so we can culture them and we export uh, ornamental fish we just collect them from the wild we can culture them so that is where the science apply the, your, your innovation supply right in here also if we can start you know new breeding techniques to various you know fish species maybe butterflies right even even uh, very colorful gobies mm. even new diplanks if you can develop some breeding techniques you can breed them in in captivity and then we can sell them right that will help both that will help eco- ecosystem Ocean. because we are we are sending them to other other in oceans we can we can put them to replenish their catches and we can earn something some more money we can preserve our own wild stocks mm-hmm. that's where the science apply right the same way you can you can you know uh, start engaging with schools your your sister schools right brother sister schools mm-hmm. right take them on board right and then start you know awareing uh, uh, awareness awareness session that goes for an investment it more you aware about the damages you are doing more you aware about you know what uh, about the your duty as individual mm-hmm. you engage in that that also help protect the environment so therefore there's a no one single way there's a lots of you know ways you can do that so for that best thing is i as i as i propose you earlier to understand that read about it keep your eyes open what is happening where you are living what what your real duties to the mm-hmm. environment to the world if you engage in that you can do something more right so sure, yeah sure professor you mentioned about the public awareness on how it really impacts on on this system on this ecosystem on this marine ecosystem which like leads to my next question so the role what do you think as public awareness plays in protecting this marine ecosystem like in a more sa- very long and brief way that you think So for example we go for a picnic let's say again to and we go to Hikadu okay so you go with your family right so you just sit down and have your your own time and then you come but you leave you all your 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 garbage Beach. and everything is there you don't have you don't have any intention to pollute that but you are you have not been trained to take it out you are not aware about you are not you don't have any idea about about the you don't have any awareness about that right so that leads to you know pollution so lots of people don't know the mistakes they are doing without knowing it right without knowing it they engage in that so we just throw away or we have you know the or the food wrapper so whatever we just throw away but they don't we don't know the impact of that in long term so if, if that's where the awareness play so if you know about the impacts if you know about your role then you start becoming you know more behaved right you start applying what you know into the real world right so in my case i clean my home all you know my home front road i clean i never drop my garbage on on the on, on you know uh, on the floor mm. i sort my garbage and if i eat a ice cream whatever i wash that ice cream cup and then i drop it right so that is how i learned because i know the impact of that in the, in the long term right therefore the awareness matter so more you are aware people more people know about the impacts and the ecosystems how it is functioning then people start you know start behaving inculcate those habits into their lives that's what we need right so this pro- that's what that's why i like this program so this is a kind of i open program and tell people what their duties because I, i always tell that we talk about csr corporate social responsible but we don't talk about isr individual social what is my job what is your job protecting the environment you come to the school and you go out after four after one that you go out but in between what is you take everything from the school what what you do as what's individual you, back to the yeah what's your footprint you you leave here have you planted any tree here have you initiated a new program here have you done any 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 any, any clean ups here that's your duty so this this awareness programs lead to that that we need people who do something extra for the existing system so extra means the system goes up i do something goes up you do something so all the collective effort will collective. be larger one right there that's why awareness matters then through awareness programs we can tell that we can convince people that okay please do that it will not take any money it will take your 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 calories mm. right you can pay from your calories right it will benefit your health also so therefore these programs are very essential very important but at the end you should give Some, some some sort of message for them okay you can do that while you are working you can do something therefore 
as as you know younger generations my 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 main request for you is to change the system do something extra something more little something little right do it so that that will lead to a bigger impact in the future if you don't change the world if you don't we means you think me but i think you both will not do it if you want to do it start from yourself i start by myself right so if you don't do that the the the, the system will be the same for even after 10 years time the system will be the same if you start changing that by awareness by 10 years time more improved system more improved environment more improved uh, you know lifestyle more improved you know our our own satisfaction will be there that's what i expect from this awareness programs mm-hmm. so this use this platform to 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 that by you know giving them the you know showing them the exact problem tell them what the what the what their duty should be and 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 convince them to do it yeah this uh discussion reminds me of a small saying by the former prime minister in St. Churchill. He always tells that don't blame others, make sure you make the change. Yeah, you should be the change. Yeah. So, yes, sir, uh, Professor, as you mentioned, that an individual needs to make this change. So, if I do it, tomorrow another person will admire me and do the same. Yeah. So, then the community will be okay. Then the community will be getting together and trying to do this change. Then the global platform as a whole will try and do this change. I mean, the individual is the key even even in uh, theoretical that we know that society generates with one individual person and with ca- multiple people the society generates so one individual needs to do this change and tomorrow someone else would admire him and do it welcome to nchs studying has never felt this good it's not just studying This is what a lab should be. Whatever I want, whenever I need. I don't miss a single class of it. I'm flying to Australia next week. Commence degree pathways at NCHS and continue in Australia, Malaysia or USA. Unlock your future. So, yes sir. So, I think as we move into the last segment of uh, this episode, uh, so, I mean, you mentioned about as an individual what you are doing. So, so Professor, you have been working in various departments, various countries and various universities and been lecturing in universities. So, could you share any successful local or regional projects that have used marine biology to tackle the environment challenges in Sri Lanka? In Sri Lanka, yes. So, uh, when I was at uh, the government sector, we initiated a program called uh, uh, Beach Caretaker. Hmm. In Beach Caretaker, what we did was we selected one kilometer stretch of beach and then we selected the most, you know, needed or most poorest family from that beach, right? Uh-huh. And we handed that beach cleaning part to that family. Hmm. So their duty is, you know, walk around the beach in the morning and collect all the Collect. garbage, right? And we arranged some companies to pay that family. So per month, they got 10,000 rupees as the salary for this two hours clean up. Two hours, every day, two hours clean up in the morning. They go with a bag and collect everything. 10,000 from the company first. Second thing is that they, once they collected, they sorted it out. They segregated and they sold all this plastic. They earned something more. Average, uh, before uh, before um, COVID, we had that program. They they earned about around 16,000 rupees on average for that beach, from that beach park, for the, from that single family. We kept the beach clean. We helped the family. And we had more than 100 beaches around the country. This 100 kilometers we kept clean okay. to this program. Right? Royal College. Since you are Royal. Yes. So, you do all the cleanups within your school. You do planting within your school. Good. Why can't you do that around the school? Okay, we look after the roads around the school. It's our job. Royalist job. You plant trees. You plant nice, you know, flower plants. Right. You keep cleaning the drainage. But first part, of course, you have to ask the uh, Kalam municipality to clean it. Mm-hmm. And then monthly you can maintain it. But you, you learn, you get experience, you feel, you know, how difficult the hard work is, right? You serve the country, right? You save money for the country. Mm-hmm. But the project is maintained by you, who means the Royal College, Science Society, whatever society, and government receive money and people walk around and say, okay, oh, somebody has cleaned the road, I keep the then we, we inquire. Then we know it's you. The credit goes to you, to your country, to your school. Something small, right? 
not the whole the whole around the row it could but select one stage royal whatever you the the rajgema rajgema take the maintained by you just the service you can do right so therefore we can do a lot as individuals right what we what uh, the problem is we have not been trained to see that opportunity right so i have done such programs right i am i am now teaching schools i am i am educating schools to engage in that mm-hmm. for example we have number of you know more than let's say 1000 government agencies around the country number of private if we can request all of them to clean their own of you know road side by themselves do we need this extra you know uh, the team to clean all the roads no you know it's a service we can expect so that sort of things we can do. i have done that so i am i am requesting you do that select for rajgi mawat okay this is our road is our name is your name is already there yeah. maintained by us weekly you can go do shramadan right you can plant what in the trees you like and you can may whenever we walk we can see a difference there can't you do that yes we can you can those are the simple things that leads you know that leads you know my take a mileage right <laughs> so those sort of things we can do i have done i am just gave you an example so thinking that way don't expect bigger funding just use your calories and your brain Yes, sir. Really, you mentioned previously about the sustainable development goals and how it affects. And the project you mentioned regarding about your perspective before COVID, beach, beach caretaker, beach caretaker. I think it like balanced the whole responsibility in the sustainable development goals. You pay the poor family uh, money as well as they are socially caretaked, and they also help the environment in a way that uh, in a way that they like. So it's really a great job that yeah. You can see Even this. you can go to Athedia mm. and take a one kilometer stretch maintained by Royal Society, Royal College, Enver, your society, society name. Mm. You maintain. You go monthly basis. Not the same team. You have a separate teams. Okay, January, January month team number one. January, February team number two, and you maintain that somewhere else, right? Again, people will start seeing that Royal is doing something extraordinary, right? So we can do that. Yes, I think uh, this. podcast will be streamed on throughout school as well i think our admissions and staff will be listening to this podcast and they will be more than willing to initiate this program so i think we recently also initiated a samadana campaign within inside our school and within rajiki mahot with our students in society so those are the small steps that we as our college has taken so so uh, at last uh, i mean in the last question of this episode so how at last uh, how can the people of sri lanka get involved in protecting their marine environments like in a very brief way if you could mention like we talked about this topic very much but how can people individually get involved the yeah, in coastal protecting? people can of course they can keep their beaches clean one thing and at the same time they can even inform police about the polluters and again dynamiters If somebody is doing dynamite, if somebody is doing pollution, if somebody is dumping something, if your company comes and put some chemical in the solution, they can they can inform the police. Police very simply they can do that. But if you are living in Kandy, if you are living in Kurnangal, if you are living in somewhere in Anuradhapura, how you can how you can protect the environment? Can you can you protect? Yes, yes you can. Right, uh-huh. sort your garbage proper way, reduce your garbage generation, reduce your plastic usage. Right. engage in more environmental friendly lifestyle you can do that right plant some more trees there so that will help you that will help protect the, not only the ocean but the whole environment right so therefore wherever you irrespective of your place you can engage in ocean protection so what you need is to know about it and do something mm. right i we have to walk the talk right yeah. we can we can talk a lot but what we need some actions right? so if if we can if you, if all the sri lankans if they understand their their duty if they understand we are to we are the country's leading environment perspective if they understand then we have to stop at some point then they can engage it and right? action speaks louder than words of course yes when yeah. actions are the key note thing to sustain anything in the world Yeah. it could be environment it could be economic it could be social of course so i think sir that's a professor i think that's done for this episode thank you very much for sharing your expertise and the insights regarding this marine biology ecosystem which is a very sensitive system i think a lot of people 
in sri lanka is not aware about it but thank you for raising up your voice and giving the awareness that the people need so in that so ladies and gentlemen as you could see how sensitive this uh subject how valuable this subject and how is a effective is this subject to people as a whole how it uh, creates a spar between the human chain as a biological chain to humans but we as people we don't think about this situations i mean we think in another angle but this is an angle that lot of people have forgotten about how it affects so i mean this is a good opportunity professor that you raised voice and gave some valuable insights regarding to the people in sri lanka on how this marine biology system effects on their lives as well so in closing marks i would like to thank you sir thank you professor for joining us today uh keeping us aside your busy schedule and giving valuable insights to whole sri lanka on this uh, marine biological system so at last uh, i would like to say that thanks for tuning into quantum cast make sure you subscribe and follow us for more valuable insight and more sensitive details such as marine biology and we'll be bringing to you more various fields regarding science where the people have not think so stay tuned with us so this is signing off to lands and vikram singh thank you